I had attended a seminar in Deadwood, South Dakota at the VFW up there by Vietnam Veterans of America. Uh, the chairman of the committee that runs it for the Vietnam Veterans of America National Committee. And a little bit of what he said. So we're gonna take it from here. My name is Maynard Catterlick. I'm with Vietnam Veterans of America. I've been with them about 30 years now. Uh, I was state president in Minnesota for 10 years, a total of 10 years, and, uh, and, and eventually got, uh, never thought I'd be this much involved with the Agent Orange issue, but when it comes home to roost in you and your families, you tend to get up and fight. So I've been very much involved now for, oh uh, gosh, a lot of years, I get about 10 years now. The national president asked me to chair the uh, National Agent Orange Committee chair position, so I've been doing that for nearly four years, and I told him I'd like to take another tour for two years. And so, me, I served in the United States Navy from 1966 to 70. I served three years, eight months, and 21 days, but who was counting? And so, uh, served uh, two years off the coast plane, plane guarding for downed pilots, and then I spent, spent a year up in the rivers uh, with the 9th Infantry Division. 9th Infantry Division, that's always a hard one to say. And so I spent a year up in the country and uh, two years off the coast, and I thought that was enough. And when they gave me an early out, I said, let's do that. And so I got out uh, a little over three months early. The nature of the meeting is to educate the veterans and their families of what's happened to their children, grandchildren, and in some, ins some instances, the great-grandchildren, in our opinion, is not a coincidence. And so that's, it's education, because there are so many veterans and families out there don't just thought, well, this happened to my ch child or this happened to my grandchild. And in my opinion, Agent Orange got a lot to do with that. Uh, we believe when we came home, it was in our blood when we came home, we believe genetically we passed it on through our wives. And it's been a, just a huge, huge nightmare for our children, our grandchildren, and great-grandchildren too. And we think it's gonna go four or five generations. And so it's, <clears throat> we're gonna be gone a long time before this is purged out of the system, if you will. I had read someplace, I guess it was email, you can't believe everything email, but I do believe this. Out of the 2.7 million men and women that served within the borders of Vietnam, two-thirds of them are gone. And we're dying at 380 per day. So that means five to seven years, we're probably going to be all gone. And we're going to run that again, guys, because that just literally shocked me. Being a Vietnam veteran, that shocked me. Out of the 2.7 million men and women that served within the borders of Vietnam, two-thirds of them are gone. And we're dying at 380 per day. So that means five to seven years, we're probably going to be all gone. Now, the average life expectancy of a Vietnam veteran is 66 years old. That's terrible. Now that comes from a website called vetsbenefits.com. No, no, vetsbenefits.net. If you wanna go check out the figures. From what I understand, the Vietnam veterans in mass are dying at an earlier age than any other war veteran. World War II, World War I, Korea, they're still, those guys alive. I still see them around, except for World War I, of course. But we're dying at an earlier age than any other war veteran. Kind of shocking. If you're out there and you're watching this and you have a dad or a grandfather who's a Vietnam veteran, you need to go get next to him and talk to him and make a friend out of him. Because he might not be around too much longer.